Hello guys, I'm the Great Fez and I am back again with another Ascent Evolution video for my series. I probably said that was my last one, but I found a new way to do some stuff and I wanted to show you guys because uh, I was pretty proud of it and it's, it's really exciting new stuff, uh, at least for me. So last time we had a pitch rate method which we found to be quite useful. It automatically tunes itself because it's based on the ship's uh, thrust to weight ratio or how it performs as it's ascending. It calculates the pitch rate that the ship needs to uh, to pitch over as a function of how fast it's going to be reaching a certain altitude. Now uh, we also added a azimuth calculator and integration using the lexicons. However, lexicons are kind of bulky. They're really good for transferring data like variables, functions, stuff like that from one uh, from one function to others or storing stuff uh, for later use uh, and printing it out onto onto files. Uh, that's that's a, those are really good ways to use it and there are probably a lot of other ways to use it, but for this it, it just didn't make any sense since the data I didn't really need to 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 pull it out. I didn't care what it was. Um, I actually just wanted to be able to do some integration. Uh, I found a better way to do that using anonymous functions, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, the tuning is is perfect, uh, at least for me. I don't have to ever tune any of the ships that I've used the pitch rate for. However, it assumes that acceleration is constant when it's doing the time to, to altitude, which is not true. So I wanted to make it more accurate by calculating the jerk and then accelerating that so it would turn into a third order polynomial. So. Uh, here are the goals for this new one. Uh, same as before for this, uh, the altitude is, or the desired altitude is 100% of the atmosphere, so in this case 70 kilometers for Kerbin, uh, and zero degrees pitch instead of five degrees. I refactor, I want to refactor it instead of using lexicons to use anonymous functions, calculate jerk, and then also uh, I want to create a library of functions that it makes it easier to transfer um, the functions and be able to, to keep track of them easier and they'll probably move those into their own repository at some point. So anonymous functions. Uh, I'm going to pull up the anonymous functions from the docs here to give you a quick example of how they're used. Um, they are essentially a way to set a variable to a function which then you can call that variable and even in use that variable as an input to another function. So a function can have inputs that are functions and then that makes the the function more input, uh, or how should I say, the the function is input agnostic in the terms that in the way that you can use any function that you input it as as inputs that then can then be used uh, for your calculation. So, for example, if I wanted to make my pitch rate calculator, I can make it so that it can either use the acceleration uh, time to altitude calculation or the the jerk. Ex, uh, time to altitude acceleration. I didn't do that for this because I wanted to maintain the old way that it was doing it so you can see the difference, but uh, that's one way that the, that you could use this. Um, the next thing I want to show you is in a quick example of how to make a, a derivative calculator or a derivator. Um, here, right here is the code that, and this is, this code is already in my library which I have on my repository, so don't don't feel like you need to copy this or rewrite it. You can just copy it from my repository. Uh, but essentially, it, these inputs right here, or these variables, are going to be locally stored inside of this function. Uh, in this case right here, inside this vert speed calculator. So these, I don't need to keep, uh, keep these stored outside of the function. I just need to call it, and it'll use these, update them here, and then and then store them within the memory here until I stop the script or delete the function or whatever. Um, so that's awesome. I don't need to use lexicons to you know input the data, save it, and then pull it back out. I can just keep the data that needs to be in there um, stored and then pull out the d data that I actually need, which would be the derivative. Uh, this right here is a quick little function make uh, and then also run to calculate the vertical speed. Actually compared this to the vertical speed that you can just pull from KOS and it was pretty close as, as and there are zero differences uh, maybe 0 0.1 differences every once in a while but it was really close I was pretty impressed uh, this is the update of how to do it 
So before we were to find the time to final altitude, we just used a quadratic equation to solve for t because there was a square root function. There isn't such a fine, nice way to do it for a third order polynomial. So instead, we have to use a solver uh, to do it. And for that, we're going to be using a bisection solver. Um, this is how essentially a bisection solver works. It finds the answer between two points, um, then, then looks for the middle or finds a point between those two, so right in the middle, and then checks which one's better. And then if it's better, it, re it removes half of the of the range and then continues that process. So it cuts, cuts it in half, which one is better, then deletes the one that's worse. And then it just does that over and over. So essentially your search area will reduce by one half every time that you run this iteration. Eventually you'll get close enough to this answer right here that uh, to within some tolerance that you're looking for that your answer will uh, be you know uh, acceptable so this is a walkthrough of how it's done uh, like I mentioned before use two input guesses and in this case 100 and 101 as an example you calculate the, the score and, and this would be how close with these times what's the altitude going to be at that at that at the end of that 100 seconds or 101 if they're both ne if they're negative and positive, that means the answer is in between them, so we can go to the reduction area. If they're both the same sign, i.e., uh, positive and positive, or negative and negative, then the product is going to be positive. So we move on to the expansion. In this way, we just move the points and then expand the area a little bit to be able to find the answer. And in this case, we we reduce the area by one half um, by looking at the average point and then seeing which which of the two, which three, uh, sorry, which of the three points, because now we have a middle one, is better, and then pick those two points and continue. Uh, here's the a picture of the library that I created. So all the functions are now going to be stored in this library folder with the the sub uh, the prefix lib, um, and then I have the der derivator and integrator, bisection, execute node. All this stuff is in here. Is stuff that I'll be using in other functions or just useful things like uh, an order list um, uh, function or a Mach number calculator, which are pretty awesome. Uh, so lastly, here's the actual finished product. You can look at the GitHub link, link to get all the relevant code. Uh, so we incorporated Jerk. We added a library and we changed it to using anonymous functions, which I'll probably be using a lot of in the future because it's just such a nicer, cleaner way. And it goes along more with object oriented programming, which I'm trying to teach myself. And a lot of the industry in my area and simulation work uses object oriented programming. So it's good practice. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to go into the changes that happened here. So I'm not going to go into all the specific changes because it's, there's a lot. Uh, but one of the things that I want to mention is I also added a logging function. So uh, using this flag, if this is set to true, it'll actually log this this list of data, uh, time, altitude, vertical speed, etc., onto a file with the um, the name that I specify, and then either uh, the square root uh, pitch function, the acceleration pitch function, or the jerk pitch function. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys the MATLAB plots that I created from those after I go through this. Um, these are right here is the library of, of scripts here. Um, this one in particular is pretty awesome. I, I've never seen this equation before, but it works. You use the dynamic pressure and the out, the pressure at the at the altitude that you're looking at to determine your Mach number, uh, and it works. This IDX is the only parameter that you really need to worry about for other bodies. Kerbin's, um, uh, I think it's called the adiabatic index. That's essentially what the composition of the atmosphere, which is they try to mimic Earth's, which is also 1.4. Uh, Duna is a little bit different. I think some other uh, body is 1.4, but I don't remember. So just be sure to fix that if you're looking at other uh, bodies to use that on. Uh, the bisection solver here, the way that I store and, and output data is using a list, uh, a two-dimensional list. So the inputs are, or the number of input, uh, yeah, test points, sorry, is on the first 
uh, dimension and the second dimension is the test point and then the score. Uh, and so I use, here's another example where I use a function delegator or anonymous function to then calculate the score. So this is totally agnostic to what I was doing before. I could use any score function and any test points to uh, run this solver. And what's awesome about this is that this can be continuously run. So once you get to an answer, you can just continuously run it until the answer is solved. Uh, I'm going to be using this in a lot of other areas where I use bisection solvers. It's going to be pretty pretty fun. Um, uh, that's pretty much all the things I, I wanted to go through um, here. The actual launch function uh, just made a quick bunch of changes. I used uh, the the derivator function instead of calculating the Excel for the rate pitch rate function. This is the pitch rate anonymous function that I created, giving a vertical speed minimum, which means it needs to be going this fast vertically before it starts to pitch over. Um, these are how to just little quick functions to get the acceleration and jerk quickly. Uh, the acceleration integration jerk function, which is you know just a third order polynomial, and then lastly the um, oh yeah so this is it, where you actually get to set the pitch angle. So if it's a square root, all you have to do is just call this and it'll calculate the pitch rate based on the square root function. Uh, the, the rate function, which is what we were using before, you input the lexicon pitch data and then it outputs pitch and then the pitch select, you have to call the solver to update the test points and then test point two zero is the, the middle, which would be the best point. So that's how you get your pitch angle. Um, and then here's just a, some, pl uh, some variable data printouts and then lastly the log data functionality, which um, I would highly suggest you put in a, a certain amount of time right here. I have it set to 0 0.5 seconds. But um, if not, the data can get really big. I, when I was doing it every tick, I was getting sizes of like two or three megabytes, which, you know, after running that a couple times, it, it really eats up a lot of, a lot of space. So let me actually run. So right now it's set to, um, set to the third iteration, which would be the jerk functionality. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's, let me write that. It is not set to, set to two, which needs to be set to three. Okay, there we go. So now it's doing it with jerk. You can see how the acceleration is being calculated. Uh, jerk here is also being calculated, and they're they're being averaged over time because they're very very jumpy. Um, and then um, one of the key things that I I wanted to talk about the jerk is whenever you get into the transonic region, you're going to have a huge spike and uh, drag because it's breaking the sound barrier. Uh, that's roughly around in the transonic region is around 280. So you can see here that the jerk is now negative and the time to altitude is negative, meaning it's not going to reach the altitude. So I actually have the pitch hold while it passes that area. And then once it passes it, I then begin to update the, the time to altitude and the angle and all that stuff again, since the jerk is now positive. Um, so there it just continues to do its accent, uh, acceleration, accent, uh, sending and yeah it just continues on it's it's pretty good um not going to continue with that since i want to move on to the last bit which is um running the actual plotting so once i do that i put everything into a csv format and which can be easily imported into matlab and then i create these plots this one right here um at, uh, it's just the altitude versus time. Um, the pitch versus time, you can see the differences here, but more interestingly, you can see how close the square root function follows with the acceleration function. I thought it was really interesting. Um, gamma versus time, gamma is the flight path angle, and there's spike here is because, you know, when it's just sitting on the pad, it's not, the velocity could be any which way. So there's a weird spike there, but I, I cut it off to 100 degrees so you can more easily see it. Um, 
From there, there's the thrust to weight ratio versus time. This is just a profile of the ship, and this will change uh, depending on different ships. Um, I can actually show you um, one other one here in a bit. Uh, angle uh, of attack versus time, vertical speed, horizontal, pitch versus altitude. And you can really see how the square root function is very, very smooth. The Excel is also smooth, but the, the jerk isn't since it's more um, sensitive to the jerk of the ship, which will be changing over time. So uh, let me show you here, uh, just with changing this to, um, I'll do the, this is the Saturn V replica. And I wanted to show you the thrust to weight ratio graphs and stuff like that for that ship. It's pretty interesting. So this is the altitude pitch over time. The square root isn't as nice anymore since the, um, the ship has a lot longer to burn and isn't isn't such a smooth thrust to weight ratio curve. It's very jumpy and especially right here it kind of cuts off for a bit. Um, and then lastly uh, the angle I want to show you guys the angle of attack. So most of the time so before it's kind of hovering below uh, for the Kerbal X, and then now it's actually going to be pitching, essentially producing lift all the way up until here near the end of the, the orbit. Um, yeah, so uh, there's the data you can pull if you want to, to get all the stuff that you need. For the ships that I ran, you can pull out the uh, scripts that I ran to get the, the data that you wanted um, from your own ships. Just make sure that the name is correct and uh, you, you're running the correct pitch rate uh, acceleration. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully that uh, is all makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, uh, be, be sure to let me know. Uh, I'm going to be moving on to updating the Kerpalo 2 stuff. So using now anonymous functions to update a lot of the scripts. Um, I'm also improving the the actual profile of what the ship will be doing because uh, currently there's there's a um, I'm running out of fuel, which is kind of funny with such a big ship. So I switched some some processes around so I can use a lot more of the third stage since that has a lot of unspent fuel. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll touch base with that in my next video when I get to that. Uh, no no um, guarantees when that will be. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching. See you.